Hi guys, what's up? Welcome. My name is Shada and on this channel we get creative together no matter your skill level and today I am coming at you live. <laughs> I have um, challenged myself this year to actually do a little bit more live content because I get a lot of requests for real time and of course if I do it live you get to see the art made in real time with nothing sped up. So that's exactly what we're doing today. I have some big news that I've been teasing that I am really excited to share with you. We're gonna start there and then we're going to work on some brush pen florals, uh, marker florals, and we're going to create a little autumn wreath. Now I will say just right away that Sully, my son who I just had, who we just had in May, he is in the studio today, so we will see how it goes. Chris is giving him a bottle right now, and we're just running a little family business around here, so we're gonna have fun, but I think he's gonna be fine. He's a very good baby. Okay, so I have some really big news that I can't wait to share with you, so let's just get right into it. I think a lot of you may already kind of know what's coming, and the big news is that I have merch if this is if this was not live that's where we put in the cheer yay <laughs> so it's been a long time coming I have been thinking about creating merch for many years if you love YouTube and you follow a lot of other creators um, you know most uh, creators are really excited to share merch or I have merch from like the podcasts I listen to and all that stuff um, but it's taken me a really long time to get down to it, and that's simply because I wanted to create something that was super high quality. I didn't just want to um, put my name on something. I wanted to put my art on something, and as things go with art, it can be really challenging to f get to the final draft, if you know what I mean. So I now have five t-shirt designs. We are doing four t-shirts and then there is a fifth limited run shirt and I'll share them with you. We are gonna have more merch coming. In fact, we have a poll going um, if you want to weigh in and let us know, like what else would you love to see from me? Phone cases, tote bags, greeting cards, art prints, I don't know, water bottles, what what is what are your Shada art needs? <laughs> Comment below. Um, it's great to see everybody in the chat and um, yeah, it's just great. Say hello, say where you're coming from and let me show you some of the t-shirts. I'm just looking at the poll right now. What are we seeing? Art Prince is in the lead. I mean, okay, that makes sense, Art Prince. <laughs> Um, now you can go to my shop to look at all the um, merch and to uh, check stuff out and really see it. Obviously, I'm just going to give you a little teaser here and I don't want to spend too much time on this because we've got to get down to business, which is an art tutorial. This is my limited run shirt. This one says artsy fartsy and you have a very colorful, for those of you who love color, you have a very colorful wreath there. And today I thought it would be fun to actually recreate this. We're not gonna do the same colors because we're gonna do more of like an autumn wreath, um, but we're going to do kind of a design like this. So it's sort of fun and I encourage you to go purchase this shirt or check this shirt out because it is only available for two weeks. So this is limited edition Shada Campbell artsy fartsy shirt. I've been wearing it um, and I've been loving it, even though it is colorful, but I do, I do love the color on this shirt. <laughs> hey, Sully's excited. Sully's excited, yeah. <laughs> I'm also really, really excited. This is the shirt that I've been teasing a little on Instagram. I have a perfectly imperfect shirt. It's in white, it's in black. Of course, all the designs are my own artwork. Um, we have a really pretty moon shirt. Yay! <laughs> Thank you for such sweet comments. Thank you guys so much for being so supportive. And I don't want to spend too much time teasing because I know that we want to get down to the art. This is the perfectly imperfect um, black design on a white shirt and most of the t-shirts you will not be surprised to learn come in 
shades of grays and whites and all those nice shade of colors. And I am wearing my Wildflower Club shirt. It's kind of like a faded design on a gray shirt and it's just super shade y So <laughs> go uh, click the link, check out the shop and um, stick around because I'm going to be giving away a few of the shirts. Well, whatever, uh, whoever the winners are can choose the have choice of design. What am I saying? You have your choice of any of the shirts um, if you are the giveaway winner. Just real quick, this, the link is in the top of the description. If you're not seeing it, just uh, reload the page and yep. it'll pop up for you. Cool. Link is in the top of the description and um, we could pin a comment in a minute there as well. Yep. All right, let's get to it, guys. I'm going to switch over to the desk, put myself in the little picture in picture. And we are going to work through a really fun wreath design with um, some brush pens and markers. So we're going to create some flowers. I'm working in an Archer and Olive notebook. Um, but, you know, for marker, it's really just about having paper that is nice and smooth. You, don't some, you do not want something with a lot of tooth and texture because the marker will absorb and that's when you get those streaky marker lines. So if you want the color going on smooth, nice smooth uh, paper with no tooth, no texture. I'm using a mechanical pencil. I have a little eraser here. I have some fine liners, although I don't know that I will use them, but I like to have them on hand. And I have a number of brush pens. Now my marker collection like anybody is made up of different brands. I have a few Tombos. I have a set of Koi's. So I grabbed a couple colors from my Koi brush pens. And finally, I have some Faber Castells. When I begin a project like this, I like to just think about my color palette first. Oh, that's from a recent video, our little autumn doodles. I think color really can make or break the uh, illustrations that you create. And so I just sit down and I kind of play with some markers. I sort of have an idea where I'm heading. And for this one, I was thinking autumn. So I, you can see I was working with some warm colors. I threw some blues in there because those will contrast with the warm colors really nicely. Of course, I don't want to use all these colors. I kind of... Um, narrowed things down a bit. Once I have the colors narrowed down, I like to think about, okay, I've got this beautiful burgundy. Well, I'm gonna use that for a large flower and this beautiful gold, that's gonna be a little berry, just like on the shirt. So this step, I didn't really want to take the time because um, it can just get really long in a live, but this is where the art begins, thinking about color and then thinking about how we incorporate those colors. So the peach is going to be a rose and the brown will be for the leaves. And taking that time to do a little bit of planning is really going to elevate your art. And it gives you a lot more confidence, I think, when you actually go to put you know, pen to paper, so to speak. So let's start with our uh, wreath. And basically, simple enough, you just wanna do a little curving line now just like on the t-shirt on my brand new merch <laughs> there's an artsy fartsy wreath t-shirt and that wreath design is kind of an open wreath which i think is quite pretty and fun one thing i will point out is don't let your circle go like right to the outer edge of the page remember your flowers might be this big you need a bit of a margin or it's just going to look funny when it's all done once you get the shape kind of right, just uh, make sure your pencil's not too heavy. It's just sort of annoying to have a bunch of pencil lines when you begin drawing. And we will actually just jump right in with our markers. But before we get started, why don't we do the first giveaway? If you would like to win a t-shirt of your choice, it could be the perfectly imperfect, ba, 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 ba. it could be the artsy fartsy, whatever you like. We will give it to the first person to answer this trivia question, this Shada trivia question. If you're um, 
part of this this artsy community, then you probably know what was the overall theme for the October Bujo. My October bullet journal, what was the theme? What would you say was the overarching theme? First one to comment. Chris will be reading the comments and um, I'm looking as well. So <laughs> once we see that, we will let you know and then make sure that you pumpkins. I saw that MM looks like the first one to me. That was the overall theme was pumpkins. Yep, got it. Okay, so MM, please um, drop your email in the comments or email me at team Shada. I'll put my email in there. Yep. Team Shada at gmail.com. Send me an email with your uh, with your email and then we can get your address and you can pick out your your shirt. Okay, cool. Awesome. Let's keep on moving and there will be another giveaway. Okay. What I like to start with is, let me flip back. I know these are going to be my large flowers. I'm doing a large burgundy flower and a somewhat uh, large peach kind of rose. So a really easy way to start your wreath is to just say, okay, well, those are my two flowers. They're the biggest. So let's start there. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. Get rid of some of our pencil. And for the burgundy flower, which is made up of um, just basically four or five petals, you know, it's honestly not all that different from watercolor. I like to draw them one petal at a time, just like that, like kind of three larger petals across the top. And all the petals can certainly be the same size. I tend to make my front ones just a little shorter. Gives that nice concave look to the flower. That's just a design choice. I think that's kind of pretty. That looks good. And for the center, just a few little dots. That's all you need to do with that brown. And then I know I'm going to do blue leaves as part of this, although I don't want to get crazy with the leaves because I might want to, you know, put a flower right next to this flower. I really like the Tombow brush pens too because it's not all that different from watercolor. You know, a few flicks of the brush across the page and that's it. You can really, you know, one, two. You want those loose brush strokes and it looks really loose and free and I love it. And as I said, we're not going to go crazy with the leaves. We want to get the flowers on the page first. So that's quite pretty. Let's move up here. I always get questions about this. I just use the mop brush um, to get rid of the eraser dust so you never end up like blowing and spitting on your page. <laughs> and we're going to put our our rose and this is basically just like a circle that I kind of make a broken spiral just something like that might fill in that a little bit more and then I'm taking that brown again and just a few dots in the center give it that look of the stamen and I'm going to use this brown for the rose leaves and same thing like a couple couple little leaves just kind of tucked in and we can come back to the leaves a little later. I'm so glad you like the colors. I, uh, I love fall colors. I was thinking warm and cozy and um, as I said, it's all about thinking about your colors ahead of time and that really kind of amps up your art. Let's have a sip of tea. <laughs> And I'm going to continue with these flowers. Now, one thing that you can do to make this look really, really good, actually, I'm gonna do another peach flower, is make sure that you don't do all of them the same size. So why don't we, why don't we come over in a little and just do like a smaller rose. That way 
we have some size variants and then I'm going to do a nice big burgundy flower over here and I want it to be on a bit of an angle kind of angling out the way the wreath is is moving you can see I'm just following the same formula like one leaf at a time or I mean one petal at a time. I don't know why I always mess that up when I'm speaking in my voiceovers. I always do that. Leaves, petals, petals, leaves. Okay. I have an interesting question here, Bones. Yeah. Do you soften the Tombow brush pens with water when you're done or Marlona? Oh, do I soften the brush pens with water? No, I've never tried that. You keep them hydrated or something? That's um, honestly something I'd have to Google. I don't really know that much about it. But um, actually, I'm definitely going to look into that. That's a great question, but unfortunately, I just don't. I've never heard of doing that. But just because I haven't heard of it really doesn't mean anything. I'm always learning, um, especially from the comments and stuff that I read on the videos. So if anybody else wants to jump in and let us know if that's something you do and, um, you know, if that's like been a good thing for you and your art supplies. But good question. Um, where should we go from here? Let's do one more burgundy flower up top. I'm gonna let the flowers kind of get a little bit smaller as we move towards the top of the wreath, but not like super significantly so. In fact, for this one, I'll just do four petals. That's that. Cute. And I might even do like a really small one, something like that. That way it kind of looks like it's just blooming up and out. Oh, do I use water on the drawings? No, no, I don't render these with water. These are just, um, these are just brush pen florals. And uh, I do like to layer the marker and I like to treat the markers as though I am painting with a brush almost, and I find that gives me a really good effect, but I'm not rendering them in any way. This is just marker or brush pen on paper. Um, let's go and put another rose in here. I'm gonna put one just right here. And they can all be different sizes. They do not need to be uniform. In fact, it's gonna look more natural. It's gonna look better if they're not uniform. And do some tiny kind of rosebuds in here. And you can see the wreath really coming together. We might even do, let's go back and check. This is the thing with the, um, with the planning that you've done, it's really helpful because you get to go, kind of go back and forth and say like, am, am I gonna have enough going on here? Another question about how long it takes for the tips to fray on your Oh gosh, that's a good question. You know, that's really all about how often you use them. Let's talk about that for a sec. Um, I think it just comes down to, you know, do you have one pack of Tombows and you're using them from every for every project? Or do you have a variety of markers? I find that for me, I bought these markers about a year ago. I've been using them a lot and I tend to use the same colors over and over again as well. And um, I haven't had much fraying, although on my dark green one, that's probably my most heavily used, I did notice that I got some fraying. So, and that's okay, you know, because I can go and replace just that single one. And I think that's a really nice thing about the Tombows is they're often sold in singles at art stores. But I just find the best thing you can do is store them horizontally. So I have just a big Tupperware that I keep them in um, and, and just be gentle with them basically.
All right, let's keep going. I'm going to do, I'm gonna leave the flowers alone for now. And as I was just sort of flipping back, I could see what else I need to incorporate. I'm definitely going to simply add some more of my blue leaves. So the burgundy flower has the blue leaves. Yeah. Does the notebook you use have dots on it? No, this is not a dot grid notebook. So this is an Archer and Olive notebook that is just um, nice clean white pages. It's not my bullet journal. It's just like a cutesy little journal that I use for, for like doing illustrations and stuff like that. So um, you can see I worked up my color palette here ahead of time. <laughs> and um, this is a video on YouTube if you want to check that out. But the paper is really nice. Um, for creating brush pen florals or working with markers. I think if you have an Archer and Olive notebook, you'll be really happy with the bright white pages. They're really thick. They're really good quality. So let's put some of these beautiful golden berries on here. The berries are a really good space filler. I'm using a dark brown to just keep everything together and make my little twigs. Mm, let's put another berry over here. I'm just going to put that there to start it, but I always do the berries first and then I join them together afterwards. It's also nice to kind of tuck items in behind leaves or flowers. It just gives it a really natural, organic feeling. Like we could have a little berry poking out over here. <laughs> there we go. I'm going to do some just some really nice simple leaves just in brown and that's another great space filler you can you know put these wherever and they'll really fill the wreath out nicely Archer and Olive, um, after the video is done, I'll add our Archer and Olive link um, for the materials. We always list our materials, and we will do that. Um, I believe there is a link. Oh, there is a link, right, in the description? Yeah. yeah, we always put our materials in the description. So if you're ever looking for the stuff that I'm using, it should be there. Yeah, for sure the first link under my favorite supplies. Perfect. These blue flowers need their leaves. I'm going to do that. You can see how quickly this wreath comes together. It becomes just about like filling in and everything kind of, once you put those first couple flowers, then after that it's, it gets kind of easy because everything is just filling in space and it's just fun. Question about where you get your art supplies? Sure. Um, art supplies, I'm kind of old fashioned. I still tend to go to the art store. I like picking up things. I like looking around and like seeing what's new and wasting my money. <laughs> Just kidding. I do buy stuff on Amazon sometimes. Archer and Olive, she's online and I love her notebooks, so I order them. Um, yeah, but there's nothing nothing beats like going to the art store in Canada. We have a store called De Sears, and I just love going in there and looking around. So I've got my flowers, my berries, my brown leaves. I think my last thing was these burgundy leaves, and that's it. And then we're just going to layer some color. So I've got a burgundy here that's actually not all that different from the burgundy I used for the flower but I kind of like that I think with markers it's really cool if you can um, 
use colors that are similar, you know, use a really subtle color palette. I always get questions on Instagram, like, is that watercolor or is it marker? And I like that. I think it's uh, all about choosing those really nice colors and that just gives it, um, I guess like a more sophisticated feel, if, that, if I could say that, about my own work. <laughs> Uh-oh. For those of you that don't know, I had a baby in May. Chris and I had a baby in May. Did I already say that on this live stream? He's just over four months old now. We're having so much fun. He comes to the studio with us while we film and um, we work from home, of course, as well. And that's become part of our, our routine. And honestly, we just have really loved becoming parents. It's just been, been fun. <laughs> He's a really fun baby, a happy baby. We're lucky. Just kind of filling in, like if I need some blue, I'll add a little bit of blue. I feel like I need blue right in the middle here. Put that there. Um, maybe a cup, maybe one more thing of berries would be good too, actually. The nice thing about berries is you can tuck them anywhere. You can kind of, yes, Sully will be painting. We'll make a little artist out of them yet. <laughs> I think having kids, it's, I'm, I'm, I anticipate a lot of fun. There's just so many chances to be creative, like coming up with Halloween costumes and, decorating their bedroom and all of that and then before long they can get involved with all of that stuff as well but yeah you can kind of tuck berries in wherever you need a little space like there I'll put a few in there and that kind of fills that space in nicely as, lo as long as you put one or two I think it always it looks good and normal <laughs> there we go maybe we'll make that one a little more yeah one more there. Okay, what do we need to do now? I want to do some layering basically and just um, and just start layering some color. So for these beigey leaves, we'll do just a little line down some of them. Don't have to do all of them. You know, it's perfectly imperfect as usual. I do have a, a dark purple here, and what I thought it would be nice to do is just kind of color half of some of these burgundy leaves to differentiate from the other burgundy. We're gonna put a little bit of purple at the center of these flowers, some of them, just to make them appear a little more concave. I think this is when you can really elevate your work as well and make it look not as much like marker, give it more of a painterly look. I've got a dark blue and I'll do the same thing on these blue leaves. Just a quick little swipe of the brush. There we go. And I think I definitely have a few berries that need stems. And then that's my wreath, pretty much complete. I think you can see it came together pretty simply. It's a fun little project. It'd be so good on a greeting card. I'm going to notice later, like, oh, I completely forgot that berry or something. But that's the general look. Um, I think um, I just saw that question. Do you have a video on choosing color palettes? I do. And we will edit the description afterwards and we will put um, we will put that as an additional tutorial because we do have, um, I think, at least one, if not two videos on uh, thinking. Yeah, we definitely have two videos on thinking about color. So we're going to do just a little message um, in the middle. I think what I thought would be cute, would you could easily put a message below, but I think with the wreath, if you've got the space there, it just looks so pretty. So let's put hello autumn because it's an autumn color palette i'm just doing a simple cursive 
I always kind of do it like once or twice, you know, get it in the middle, get it looking the way I want. There we go. And I think I'll probably just go over it with my black Tombow brush pen. I just saw the question about tagging on Instagram. Yeah, please tag me. You can always tag me at Shada Campbell and you can use hashtag Shada made me draw it. I'm going to put that in here. Um, a lot of people are using that hashtag currently to share their work and it's a really nice way to share your work and become part of the community and it's a nice way for you to share without feeling like you're posting something that you saw in mine and are you sure it's a, you know I think people have concerns about sharing online what they learned from the videos because of copying but you're not copying you're learning and you're crediting me by letting other people know where you learned it and that is um, huge for helping the channel so use the hashtag Shada made me draw it and um, and and tag me for sure because I also just love to see it my <laughs> I am always spending my mornings having tea and playing with Sally and looking at the art that uh, has been posted the day before so yeah okay let's finish our piece we're almost done and all we have to do now is take our brush pen you could use any color I had grabbed a dark gray because I kind of thought that would be pretty but I'm gonna use black and we are going to carefully go over it with our pen. Hello, Autumn. It's a little bit thick, but I think that's okay. It's fun. I don't know if I was going to do it again, I might use a fine liner to do it, but that's okay. Perfectly imperfect. Thank you guys so much for being here today. It does look like a Bujo door. We could easily create a cool Dutch door out of this, couldn't we? <laughs> that would be so fun. Remember, this is based on the artsy fartsy shirt. Uh, and this one is limited edition. So this is available for two weeks. This is my only like really big colorful shirt that I have available right now. We will do more shirts and we will do more limited runs in the future. Um, but definitely go check out the store. It should be in the video description. You will see it. Um, follow me on Instagram because I'll be um, showing off some of the designs. <laughs> I have to get some models other than myself, but that's all coming in time. Susan, I just saw your question. The merch is available in my new shop and um, I've linked to the shop in, in the video description. It's the description. Yeah, and as soon as we're done here, we'll post, uh, we'll pin a comment as well. Um, yeah. So it should not be hard to find. Oh my gosh, a baby onesie. That's a great idea. We should do a baby onesie. That would be so cute. And then we could do matchy matchy, which I love. Okay, guys, I think all we need to do is give away one more shirt, right? It's a shirt of your choice. We'll do another little trivia. Um, let's do something from the video. Um, you've been following along. Where is my notebook from? First person to answer the brand of the notebook I'm using for today's art will win a t-shirt of your choice. I feel like a game show host. <laughs> will win a t-shirt of your choice. Archer and Olive, Grace Filled Doodles. Ooh, I like that name. You win. <laughs> Grace Filled Doodles, great name. Email me. The email is teamshada at gmail.com and uh, we will get your address and you can check out the shop and, and pick out what shirt you would like and we'll send it to you. Guys, thank you so much for celebrating with me today. This has been fun. We wanted to launch the merch and show off the t-shirts and do some art, some autumn art. Um, 
so definitely <laughs> typing too slow. Yeah, it's a, it's a hard game <laughs> to play here. I certainly would not be winning. I'd be like typing and messing it up. Um, I happen to simply love the shirt that I have on. It says Wildflower Club and uh, <laughs> and I just like the kind of faded on the gray. That's very moi. So go check out the shop and let me know what you think. Like I'm going to be on Instagram all weekend sharing more images of the clothes and uh, we definitely are going to have more merch coming. We're starting with t-shirts, um, but there's lots more to come. So um, give me all your thoughts on that as well. And thank you for taking the poll. Sully has been very good. He has not barely made a peep. Now there's a plane flying over, which of course there always is when you go live. <laughs> But I think this went very well, and I just thank you for being here and commenting and being so kind and supportive of my business and of this channel. I can't wait to see your recreations on social media. Use the hashtag Shada Made Me Draw It. Check the description for additional tutorials and for the shop link, and uh, I think that's about it. Thank you, guys. I will see you soon with a new tutorial.